But anyways, let's get right into it. Greetings and welcome back everyone to the Matrix Unveiled School of Mysticism. My name is Thanuj and welcome back to January 2nd. This is the brand new year of 2024, and we're going to be discussing with you for our very first live event inside of the School of Mysticism. We're going to be talking about ancient mysteries unveiled, the secrets of the ancient temples, magical guardians, and keepers of the celestial realms. So I'm very excited to be here today, once again, in the School of Mysticism. Thank you to those of you that are live here with us, and all of you that are tuning in to the replay and to the conversation we have quite an impressive and important lecture for you all today. So we're going to get right ahead and go get started. And we're going to be discussing, once again, as I said, the ancient mysteries unveiled. So we're really going to talk about where did the magic originate? Where is the source point of magical energy and of this creation that we find ourselves in? And was there a point in our reality at some point in the past or in our historical experience or even within other civilizations, was there a point in reality where we experienced more magic, more mysteries, more power, more divinity, and more ability to connect with a higher plane of existence and higher uh, realms and levels of consciousness. So we will be breaking down and decoding this mystery for you today really tapping into what the ancient temples were and what they signified as magical uh, guardian stones or, or keystones within the reality and how these ley lines connected and created the tree of life and created these networks and these nodes of energetic communication between the earth and between the heavens and the celestial realms and also the guardians and the gatekeepers between these realms and how do these beings operate? What are these beings? Who are these beings? So we will talk about what and who these beings actually are. We will give you some of the names, but we will also explain something far deeper than what you've probably been told or learned about thus far, which is the understanding that these beings are not just physical based beings, that they are uh, a field of consciousness and that they actually are archetypal energies, and we, as players in this archetypal game, embody various energies, various archetypes, various types, various versions of these preset energies, and we can learn to harness and wield these archetypes for the betterment of humanity. So, really, it's all about the expansion and the upliftment of consciousness, and therefore, our lives, our existence. One of the things we see in today's society is we see um, what's been talked about in the, the ancient texts for a long time, which is basically the decline of society at a certain point in history. So you have the different ages or the different yugas or the, the yagas, which is discussed in the Sanskrit text, the Puranas and the Vedas. And so these ancient texts come from the Vedic uh, literature, and we'll be looking a lot today at what the Vedics discuss, the ancient Vedics, the ancient Hindus, the ancient uh, Indian civilization, as well as we'll talk about other civilizations um, as well. But today we're really going to talk about what the ancient Vedics had to unveil for us. And <clears throat> they discussed about what we call the, the yogyas, or the different types of aeons within time. So there would be different times upon the earth where there'd be times where the gods or the divine realms or the devas, which were basically the intermediaries, would communicate and would interact with humanity on a more commonplace level. So that this would be times where, you know, there were palaces, there were grand temples, there were grand areas of energy work and mysticism and magic and there were the occult libraries and there were the mystery schools flowing and there were these all these rituals that they performed in order to keep the balance between the celestial and the cosmic realms and the physical realms and it was only through the time of the invaders and the conquerors what mostly being you know Mughal empires and other Arabic empires and other Persian dynasties and other, you know, even the Spanish, the Portuguese, the French, the British, of course, 
These invaders came into the sacred lands and they ransacked the temples. They ransacked the sacred spaces, which were holding divine frequencies, which were holding divine beings and divine energies into this anchor point. So earth is like the base zone and earth can kind of go into heaven or hell, depending on the level of consciousness of the people and the level of understanding of the magic and of the mystery and of the ancient mystery. That's why it's called ancient mysteries. And that's why we have to unveil it. And really what we'll explain to you, what are the ancient mysteries? See, that's something you may not understand. What is an ancient mystery? What is it? What is it classified to be an ancient mystery? So these sacred zones, these sacred temples, which can be found all across the world. So there are temples in Peru. There are temples in Brazil. There are temples in the Mayan regions or, you know, where now we find Mexico and, and South America. There are temples in Africa. There are temples in North America. There are temples in, obviously, India and the North Indian areas and the South Indian areas. There's been temples and shrines and altars and basically magical zones or ley line zones where hot spots were created of this current. And this current we discussed before we talked about this in the magic of the ley lines unveiled, okay? When we were really going into the ley lines and how the ley lines operate and how this energy flows between the ley lines in through the tree of life. The tree of life being the very blood vessels or the very vessels of this magical current. And so remember that this magical current is being sourced from the goddess, from the earth mother, and from the divine father or the divine masculine energy. And is it is this combination of the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine, which is the true principle of divinity. There's also spaces which exist which are beyond the masculine and the feminine because this is really just a principle that exists here, but as above, so below, as been taught by the great Hermes Trismegistus III, right? So we're talking about initiation here as well. And that's another thing I want to talk to you about, which is what is initiation? What is initiation into a quote unquote secret society or a secret temple or a mystery school? What, what is initiation? Initiation is the understanding, and there's levels to initiation, but initiation on, on a fundamental level is the understanding of the magical currents. And so therefore, you have initiation that is done by these brotherhoods, such as Freemasonic brotherhoods and Masonic organizations. And this is a form of initiation. However, their main form of initiation is to initiate their students or their their members, and then to corrupt and to pervert the teachings of this ancient mystery knowledge in order to serve their false god. However, at one point, initiation actually was a real phenomenon in which beings would pass the baton, the torch, the spark, the current, the knowledge, the wisdom, the pranoia, the divinity, and they would help pass along to the tribe and to the community this knowledge for the upliftment of consciousness, for the freedom of beings' awareness, so that way they could achieve moksha, which moksha would be spiritual liberation from the physical plane. This was the ultimate goal of initiation and true, uh, truly joining a mystery school or joining a secret society or joining a coven or joining like one of these communities. However, ba however back in the day, there was far more restriction. There was far more limitation. There was far more um, manipulation of the consciousness of those members because the greedy and the powerful wanted to control and keep control of these realms for themselves, which is why they perverted the knowledge, which is why they did all of these blasphemous rituals, rituals of sacrifice and bloodshed and harming and enslavement. What this does is this takes this sacred divine magic and this sacred divine energy and it starts to twist it and warp it and distort it and takes it away from its true origins, which is, again, what, which was what I said, which is the planetary mother and uh, the divine masculine father, okay? 
which these principles of these energies exist within us. So we have the divine masculine and feminine within us because we are the very essence of creation. We are the very fabric of creation. We are a mirror down. We are a fractal down of what exists on the highest planes. And so today we will talk about how these beings, these guardians, these temples, all of this is not to worship or to pray something outside of yourself, but to understand that you are creation itself. You are creation. So when we talk about praising the earth, we're not talking about praising the earth as some sort of external thing. We are the earth. So we have to recognize that there's a fundamental difference between when we think, okay, I'm, I'm here and there's the dirt and there's the grass and there's the trees. This is a misconception of reality. <laughs> and this is where religion actually came into play and actually hijacked the whole thing. Because if creation or if these elite or if these oligarchy or if these dark magicians, these dark priests could basically get you to think that you are separate from creation, now there is an error and there's a division within your consciousness. Now you can be manipulated. You can be cut off from your forces or cut off from the truth and cut off from what is really going on. So when we talk about the earth, we have to recognize that we are the earth because we are soil, we are carbon, we are water, we are fire, we are electricity. That's what's pumping our heart. We are an electromagnetic field. We are very much uh, from the earth because we eat from the earth. We breathe her oxygen. We release our carbon dioxide. Every part of our physical vessel is part of the earth as well as our Taurus and our subtle components, so our energetic components, also receive energy from the earth plane. And we also give energy to the earth plane. So essentially, when we're talking about the ley lines, when we're talking about the mystery school, when we're talking about these temples of magical current, we must recognize that we too are the magic. We too are the ley line. There are ley lines inside of us, just like there are ley lines outside of us. And only when we can see from a whole 360 degree spectral consciousness viewpoint, can we recognize that what we do within us affects the external. What we do externally affects the internal. So when we can balance the energies within us, we can balance the energies externally from outside of ourselves. And when we can balance the energies outside of ourselves, we can also learn to balance within. And this is what protection of creation is really all about. And being a guardian is to learn how to balance the energies, to learn how to clear the energies from certain malicious energies or malevolent energies or energies that would not have creation's best interest in, in mind. So that's what we will be talking about today. Um, we will be going deep. Today's lecture will be, of course, recorded for all uh, School of Mysticism mystical initiates. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll get uh, a certain portion of this conversation to really ignite the spark within you to uplift you to a higher truth because we are about initiation for humankind's um, remembrance of their origins. And I believe that we can create a much, much, much better world together. And you'll, you'll come to find out that the real source and the real purpose of this truth is so that way you understand all this knowledge. And once you understand this wisdom and you've really, really meditated on it and it started to sink into your energetic field, what will begin to happen is you'll begin to be able to rewrite your code, rewrite your reality, rewrite your existence. And you will be a spark carrying on the flame, carrying on the baton, carrying on the energy and we can come together as divine sparks, as I've said so many times, to rewrite this reality. This is what we're really here to do. We are here to rewrite ourselves and this reality. We are here to unlock our divinity. We are here to become the gods and goddesses. We are here to become the divine ones. We are the auspicious ones. We do carry the magical flame. And so let us begin with the initiation. They are leading, even myself, you know, these messages come in a chronological order. They come in, a, in an order. So you would have to understand that 
fire, water, earth, air are all divine forces that can be communicated with before you could recognize, hey, I can actually use the fire to connect to the devas and connect to the otherworldly planes and then speak with them, put, put in my request or ask them, why are things challenging in my life? Why am I facing this challenge or how can I overcome this challenge? This is what it means to be connected to the ancient temples and to the ancient powers and to the ancient realms. You actually seek counsel and go back and forth with the spirits in your manner. Now, this doesn't mean that the spirit is going to actually appear to you in full apparition and fly by you and go, ooh, and then you're going to see the apparition go by. That's like a Hollywood interpretation of how spirits work. <laughs> and I think it's funny because people will look for that. And they'll wait for that. They'll be like, I can't see it. I can't see it. It's not always visible in your visible, visual spectrum. It is a subtle feeling. It is a subtle awareness. One of your senses will begin to pick up the interpretation of the subtle realm. Whether it be through feeling, whether it be through hearing, whether it be through just like feeling energy, whether it be through a, a change or flux, whether it be through you sensing something else or, or you sensing a part within yourself that is starting to activate. This is how you really know that you're, you're accessing the divine realm. The divine realm doesn't come from out there. The divine realm comes from in here. And so when you tune into these energies, they start to activate from within you the knowledge that you already had of this that was buried deep, deep, deep underneath your programming, deep underneath the conditioning of society. The conditioning of society that taught you you were this individual with this name and this this job or this this life or this place that you lived in and you did this and you had this family. This is all of the Maya, which is uh, coincidentally another deity or another force that exists within the Vedic temples. Maya being illusion. So Maya is cast over the world and only those with clear cognizance, clairvoyance, and only those that can dispel Maya through their understanding of what the Avtar is, can see through the Maya. And recognize the Maya is basically a changing, ever-wielding, ever-transforming geometry of patterns. That is why you see the temples being built in such a geometrical way. That is why you see them having these repeating foldings and fractals, because the ancients understood the fractality of reality, or the fractal nature of reality, the repeating geometric pattern. And if you go into nature, you'll see repeating patterns, repeating codes. This indicates, in some essence, a, sim a simulacra, okay? A repeating fold numeric. So it's 1.618 is a phi ratio, 3.14159. What we find in our reality today is that most of these gateways have been shut off and turned off and destroyed, and that's why we have such a density on the planet. So when you would go into a very high vibratory state from like, like a plant substance or a deep meditation or a lot of magical ritual, like if you've ever experienced how you feel after a magical ritual or even after I, after, uh, like after I teach a lecture or certain things, when the current is flowing, 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 there's this level of electricity that you'll build. You'll feel very charged up, especially... Um, especially if you do like a ritual, okay? So if you're doing a ritual, you're invoking some forces, you're doing some runes, you're doing some sigil working, and then you're charging, you're working with your crystals. After you do that, take note how you feel. You'll probably feel like very buzzy. You'll probably feel way more uh, et uh, ethereal. You'll probably feel like you're really floaty. You'll feel like your body feels light. Uh, you may feel a clearing of your energy. You'll also feel like a type of high, like... And in like a endorphin high, kind of like if you, after you work out, you'll get this high. It's a similar high, but it's like a magical high. So it's like you're getting a buzz off of you changing your own chemistry. So as you go into the ritual, because of the smells, because of the scents, because of the concentration, the shifting of your brain waves, the concentration of the energy, the connection with the divine realms, you're actually receiving a change in your neurochemistry. So you're experiencing elation, you're experiencing like more serotonin, more dopamine. And this is the natural process that can occur. And that's what happens when you activate with the ley lines is that you get this sense of um, elation 
And also, when you are channeling the energies, you can feel very energized. Like, like there are times when we've done certain rituals and then we were just buzzing for four or five hours after doing the ritual. And then we realized, hey, we need to, like, we can't, we can't stop the current. <laughs> like, you can't stop the current. It's not stopping. And then you have to, um, basically what you have to do then is you have to go and you have to ground yourself down. So you got to go to the tree. You got to plant yourself around the tree and, like, send the current down so it's not just circulating in your throat and your pineal and your uh, your upper centers because it can just it can it can keep you going like too much you see so as we activate and as these ley lines are starting to activate through celestial mechanics which is creating the precise structures the gateways start to open up and really one of the reasons why we're teaching this lecture today is because we want you to start activating these gateways within your own homes and your own spaces. So what I'm telling you is you don't need to have a mystery. Um, you don't need to have an ancient temple in your backyard. You need to actually recognize that this space can be created anywhere. And because we no longer have those spaces in, in the mass space or in such large quantities, we have to create our own ley line structures. This would be what you call alter creation.